And to show you how uh, things are in baseball, in the eighth inning yesterday, Casey couldn't have been elected to very much around this neighborhood. But right now, he's the man of the moment. Just pitching to one batter and getting out of that jam in the top of the fifth. And so it's three runs. Seven hits, no errors for the Yankees. And it is two runs, four hits, and no errors for the Dodgers. And with all these pitches coming in, you may still wonder who is the Brooklyn pitcher who is still liable for the Yankee lead. Well, the Brooklyn pitcher who is still responsible as the score stands is starting pitcher Higby. None of the relief pitchers are affected. And, of course, French and Allen never can be. If Casey continues, he can only be affected if the Dodgers tie or go ahead while he's still actively pitching. And Donald back at the mound, who started and still going. However, I see that uh, Branch and Brewer are beginning to throw him back at him in the bullpen before he ever pitches to a hitter in the last of the fifth. Well, this is Red Barber, who's enjoyed very much in behalf of Gillette, bringing you the first half of today's stirring and epic-making World Series fourth ball game. And with a great deal of pleasure, turning you over now to Bob Elson, WGN Chicago. Bob? You're the next pitcher. Thank you very much, Red. Nice going. Fans, as you already know, this is some ball game from what Red's told you. This ball game is cut practically out of the patterns of the other games as far as runs are concerned because it's still anybody's ball game. And so the fourth game of the World Series is moving into the last half of the fifth inning with Donald on the mound and Dixie Walker, the right fielder of the Dodgers, the first man up. Here's the pitch, and it's a ball. He stepped away from an inside curve ball, and it's ball one. Yankees talk it up out there in the infield. Rolfe at third, Rizzuto at short, Gordon at second, Sturm at first, Keller left field, DiMaggio center field, and Henrik right field playing straight away. Walker, a left-hand hitter. Here's the next pitch from Donald. It's a fastball, an overarm fastball right across his waist, and it's a call strike. Walker's been up twice so far today. Bounced out the first time, and the second time he flied out to Keller. He has one hit so far in the series. Count on him, one and one. Here comes the next pitch. It's a swing and a fly ball down the left field line. It may be fair, it may be foul. It's a fair ball. The left fielder caught that ball on the bounce, and Walker goes into second base, standing up with the tying run. It was a two-base hit down the left field line by Dixie Walker, his second hit of the series. The fifth Brooklyn hit. All right. There's the tying run on second base for the Dodgers now in the last half of the fifth inning. Bill Dickey steps out in front of the plate, walks out there slowly to say something to Donald, and again, there's a lot of activity in the Yankee bullpen, which is down here to our left, but way down the left field line. With Branch and Brewer still warming up both right-handers. Now here's Reeser. He's been up twice. He's had one hit. The first pitch, he hits a high fly ball into right field. Right fielder Henry goes back against the scoreboard. It's going to hit. It's a home run right on top of the fence and over. It's a home run in the Dodgers lead. Four to three. Dodgers in the lead in this fourth game of the World Series, but he is putting Donald out of the ball game. And here is Atlee Donald going out, and a new pitcher coming in from the Yankee bullpen in left field. Here's Brewer coming in. Boy, was that a wallop. So the score now is four to three in favor of the Brooklyn Dodgers, and here is a tall right-hander coming in to pitch for the Yankees. Let's take a look at what he's done this year. This fellow Brewer coming in now, took part in 26 ball games. He pitched 141 innings. He allowed 130 hits. He gave 50 bases on balls, and he had 73 strikeouts. He pitched seven complete games. He had one shutout, and his record for the year, nine victories and seven defeats. Nine victories and seven defeats. Our 
Marvin Brewer is called Adonis by the writers. He's what used to be called a Colorad type. A curveball tossing right-hander was born at Rolla, Missouri on April the 29th, 1914, and first became prominent as a hurler at the Missouri School of Mines, from which he took a degree as a civil engineer. Brewer returned to his engineering after the baseball season. He worked in the Yankee chain for some years and at last demonstrated outstanding abilities with the Kansas City team. This brought him to the Bombers in 1940. He won eight and lost nine. He's a right-hander with a baffling curveball, a nice change of pace, and pretty good speed, as you can see by his record of 73 strikeouts. He knows how to whip that last one through there. Well, while the picture has changed in that the score has changed, and the Dodgers are in the lead for the first time today. Still, it's still one of those kind of ball games. Three to two, three to two, two to one, four to three. And in no case in the ball game, in any one of the four games, has the other team been out of striking distance. Well, Brewers had his warm-up pitches. He's out there now with his right foot on the pitching mound. He's facing Camelli, who's had one hit today and two tries. And the first pitch to Camelli is the fastball inside at the waist. It's too close, and Dolph watches it sail by. You know, Reeser, I was talking to Reeser down in the batting cage before the game, and he said, Bob, you know, in these first few games, I haven't been getting many hits. In fact, he only had one. There's a fly ball into right field. It's right at Henrik, and he caught it for the first out. Camelli flied to Henrik. It was hit right at him in right field. Reeser said, I think I've been standing with my feet a little bit too far apart. Today, I'm going to shorten that stride a little bit and try to pull that ball. Well, he just pulled that ball over the scoreboard in right center field for a home run to put the Dodgers in the lead. Now, the next man to come up is Riggs, who's playing at third base today in place of Lavagetto. He's had one hit in the series, and that was in a pinch hitting roll. He's been up twice today without a hit. The first pitch to Riggs is a fastball that's right in there for a call strike. The umpire gets to the National League, who's back at the plate today, shoots that right fist up into the air. There's one out. There's two runs in. It's the last half of the fifth inning, and Brooklyn leads. Here's the pitch. It's a slow curve. He pulled a string on that one, slowed up on it, but the pitch was a little bit too close at the knees to Lou, and he watched it sail by. The Yankee outfield playing this hitter straight away and not too deep. Brewers ready again. Here's the next pitch, and there's a swing at a slow curveball, and he missed it, and it's ball one and strike two on Riggs. Ball one and strike two on Riggs. Ready out there again. Here's the next pitch. He swings and he goes all the way around and struck him out. Lou Riggs went all the way around and he struck him out. That's the fourth strikeout today. One for Higby, two for Donald, and now one for Brewer. Four strikeouts in the ball game. Here's Casey coming up, getting a hand. Casey steps around to the left side of the plate. You know, Casey is a pretty good hitter. First pitch is a ball that's low outside. Casey batting up there in this particular spot because of the switch before. Wasdell batting for the pitcher and then going into Medwick's spot in left field. Casey batting with two out. That's right-handed. There's a spike. It caught the outside corner knee high. And it's one and one. There's two gone. It's the last half of the fifth inning. It's the fourth game of the World Series at Brooklyn. It's a perfect day. A mammoth crowd. The place is jammed to the Raptors. And the score, four to three. There's a low and a low curve ball that broke outside to a right-hand hitter. And it is ball two and strike one for Casey. Big U Casey up in there. He allowed four hits in succession yesterday. Came in today and called a near riot. There's a short fly ball to center field. It's dropping for a hit. Casey dumped a Texas leaguer out right over second base in the center field. It is a hit. hit for Casey. That makes three hits this inning, and it gives the Dodgers a total of seven hits against three, six, seven hits for the Yankees. And so both teams are even in the matter of hits. That leaves Casey on first base and brings up Owen. There's two out. The pitcher Casey dumped a base hit into center field. Now here's Mickey Owen up. Owen's been up twice today, and he walked twice. The first pitch to him is a ball, low and outside. Talk about hits. Fans are sure going for that World Series special Gillette Tech race. Get yours today at your neighborhood dealers. Boy, is this a ball game. 
Casey on first base. Mickey Owen batting. Here's the pitch. There's a swing and a bouncing foul. The ball bounced up and hit him. It rolled off to the left of the plate. Umpire gets who's back of the plate today. Is going over to pick it up. And the Yankee bat boy comes out and flips it to him. In this last half of the fifth inning, the Brooklyn Dodgers have gone into the lead. Walker doubled. Reeser hit one over the scoreboard for a home run. Jamelli went out. Briggs was out. Casey singled to center, and now Owen is batting. Here comes the next pitch. It's a foul. It's coming back up here into the screen. It's a foul strike, and it's one and two. We sure had a lot of excitement. Boy, in those first four and a half innings that Red told you about, there was plenty of excitement here, and it looks like there's plenty more to come. Both these teams just battling as they have from the very first pitch in the first game. Here comes the next pitch, and Owen falls away from a slow curveball that was right close to his head. Backed up like he was going to sit down on the chair. The ball went went by him and the count is two and two. Umpire Getz gets out the whisper room now and gives the old plate the one two. Yankee outfield is straight away. DiMaggio standing in dead center field with his arms folded. Charlie Keller over there in left field and Tommy Henrik in right field. The infield practically engulfed in the shadows of the stands. Here is a foul that's coming back here near the stands. Here's Bill Dickey coming back under our mutual booth but he can't reach it. Bill Dickey came back here under our mutual broadcasting booth, which is, by the way, ideally situated, just back of the home plate and not too high. But he couldn't make the play on the ball, and he's going back to the plate now. He's just picking up his cap and mask. Mickey Owen, number 10 in the back of his white uniform, is standing off to the left of the plate. The Dodgers, of course, are the home team here at Ebbets Field, wearing the white uniform, and the Yankees, the traditional traveling gray. on first base, Owen batting. Here comes the next pitch, it's a ball. It's in too close, and he stepped away. Between every pitch, Owen steps out of the batter's box and gets some dirt on his hands. Charlie Dressen coaching at third to our left. Leo DeRocher over there at first base to our right. Yankee infielders talk it up, and now Brewer has gone back to the mound, leans over, picks up the rosin bag, takes his glove off, fidgets around with the bag for a while, drops it. Now he roughs up the ball. It's a 3-2 count on Owen with two out and a man on first and two runs in. Here's the pitch. He swings a fly ball to dead center. DiMaggio moving about five feet. He's right under it. Takes it to retire the side. And so in that last half of the fifth inning, there was a double by Walker, a home run by by Reeser, Camelli flied out, Briggs struck out, Casey single to center, and Owen flied to center field to retire the side. Two runs and three hits, and that is the end of the fifth inning. Now from baseball to bids for just a second. How about giving your face a break? Try the new Gillette Tech Razor with today's Gillette Blue Blade. Man, there's the easiest shaving combination known. See for yourself. Ask your dealer for the 1941 World Series Gillette Tech Razor, complete with five blue blades for only 49 cents. And so we've had five stirring and hectic innings. The sixth is at hand. And uh, the razor went out to center field. The center field bleacher right stood up and gave him an ovation. And now, Bob, here's the sixth inning. Yes, the sixth inning is about to get underway here at Ebbets Field. The pitcher and the catcher for the Dodgers have not come out as yet. Here's the an announcement. B-O-Y-L-A-N-D. Our two runs with New Jersey is asked to report to Lieutenant Hawkins in the rear of the Thunder at one. It is very important. Somebody wants to see somebody, and it is one of the few pages that we've had so far in the series, which, incidentally, is a good thing. Thank you. In World Series, as well as in all other ball games, they try to avoid those personal pages just as much as possible because it does nothing but distract the fans. Ebbets Field today is jammed. I say that the attendance is pretty close to yesterday, if not a couple of hundred more. Red, how does it look to you as far as attendance is concerned? Uh, Bob, I believe that we'll have uh, maybe 500 more today than we had yesterday. Of course, uh, 33,100 yesterday was just about capacity. But it seems that they're just a little bit thicker today, if anything. 
Well, we're going into the first half of the sixth inning, fans, in this World Series ball game. And here is the Yankee shortstop, Rizzuto, coming up for the third time today. He was up in the second, he flied out. And he was up in the fourth inning and hit into a force play, bouncing down to the third baseman. Scooter has had a had one hit so far in the series and has played a bang-up game at short. Now you, Casey, a powerful right-hander out there on the mound. Here's the pitch. It's a curveball breaking away from a right-hand hitter that just caught the corner. Umpire gets back at the plate, went almost down to his knees to take a good look at that pitch as it broke in to be sure that it was high enough and shoots up that right fist. It's a strike. Art Fletcher coaching at third. Earl Combs over at first. It's the Yankee half of the sixth. Score four to three, the Dodgers. Here's the next pitch. It's outside. A curveball breaking away, waist high, and it's one and one. Ball one and strike one. Casey was a relief pitcher par excellence for the Dodgers this year. He's out there. There's a foul just behind first base. First baseman Camelli is down the line just about 50 feet and takes that one for the first out. And so Rizzuto fouled out to Camelli. About 50 feet behind first and about 10 feet foul. And there's one gone. Now the next batter is the pitcher. Here's Marvin Brewer stepping up. Marvin Brewer. Stepping into the batter's box. He bats right-handed. Wasdell in left field, Reeser in center field, Walker in right field. They move in about 10 feet with the pitcher up, and they're playing the hitter straight away. Casey is starting his windup. Here's the pitch, and there's a fly ball into short right field. Right fielder Walker's under the ball and takes it for the second out. So Brewer flied out to Walker for the second out in the first half of the sixth. It was an easy play. Walker moved in about 10 feet. He was right in line with the ball and takes it easily for the second out. Now we're back to the top of the batting order, and here's the Yankee first baseman, Johnny Sturm. A new boy with the Yankees this year, and this kid has done right well all season long and takes right up where he leaves off in the season in the World Series. He had three hits up until today. He came up in the fourth inning with the bases loaded and cracked a hit in the left center field to drive in two runs. So Sturm has had one hit today, four hits in the series. He's batting with two out and nobody on in the sixth. The pitch, he slams a low fly ball to right field. It's a hit for Sturm. So that's another hit. Gives him five hits for the series. He got this one. They hit into right field with two out in the first half of the sixth. That puts him on first base and brings up Red Rolfe, who has six hits in the series. He and Charlie Keller lead the Yankees with six hits apiece. Gordon has five hits. And on first base and two out. Rolfe batting. The Yankees trail by a run. Here's the pitch. It's a strike. It's right across his knees. One strike. It's called. Red Rolfe up in there. Red's been up three times today. Single to left the first time. He singled the second time. And the third time, he flied to right. And so in three times up, he's had two hits. Casey throws to first. The runner's back in plenty of time. Just lobbed that ball over to Camelli just to keep the base runner worried. Not let him take too many liberties. Casey set. Here's the pitch. And there is a pop-up in the infield. The second baseman, Coscarard, is calling for the ball. He's right under it. He's out. And it retires the side. And so in that first half of the sixth inning, Rizzuto was out. The pitcher flied to Walker. Sturm singled. And Rolf popped up. No runs and one hit. And that is the first half of the sixth. Pete Reza, who hit the home run that Bob told you about in the last half of the fifth inning, that so far has been the last turning point in this ball game, certainly has improved this season. He started out as a rookie center fielder and wound up winning the batting championship of the league. And, of course, his last time up hit a very damaging blow. And talking about improvement, if you haven't tried a Gillette Blue Blade lately, there's a real treat in store for you. Today, this blade is keener, more uniform, longer lasting, and far easier shaving even than six months ago. And here's why. Gillette research is constant. Improved manufacturing and inspection methods are adopted just as soon as perfected. Advanced tempering processes make the Gillette Blue Blade hard enough to cut glass. Precision machines produce the sharpest, smoothest edges ever put on steel. Now's the time to try this blade because you get a regular 25-cent tube of Gillette shaving cream, lava or brushless, free with the purchase of 10 Gillette Blue Blades at 49 cents. See your dealer. Lay in a supply. All right, Bob. Well, we're going into the last half of the sixth inning of this ball game. 
The score is still four to three in favor of Brooklyn. First man to bat is the second baseman, Pete Koskarak. Koskarak is in there and plays to Billy Herman. He just couldn't come up for this ball game today. And Koskarak attempts to bunt the first pitch as Roth dashes in, and he fouled the ball on the ground off to the left. Nobody on and nobody out. It's the last half of the sixth inning of the fourth game of the series. It's running right through the pattern. National League champions are ahead, and the score is four to three. Petey Reeser's home run wallop in the fifth inning. Put them out ahead. Walker was on second. Now Brewer has the sign. Here's the next pitch. It's a ball. It just missed the corner knee high. A slow curve ball that time to Koskarak. Number three in the back of his white uniform. Here he is right down here below our booth. Next pitch is a fastball. He attempts to bunt that one. Gets it on the handle of the bat. And it rolls foul to the right of the plate. Ball one and strike two on Koskarak. A new ball is tossed down to Ralph. Ralph roughs it up in his hands a few minutes and then tosses it back to Brewer who is the second pitcher for the Yankees today. Brewer takes a look around the infield to see that everybody's in place. Brewer has his sign. Here's the next pitch. Koskarak backs away from a curveball. It's close. And it's two and two. That was a curveball breaking away from a right-hand hitter, but it didn't break away soon enough. It came in close, waist high, and it's two and two. Last half of the sixth inning. Here's the next pitch. He swings a bouncing ball down to Ross. He's up with it. There goes the peg. He's out. Rolf to Sturm. And there's one gone. The Yankees peg it around. Rolf to Rizzuto, to Gordon, to Sturm. Back over to Rolf at third base and then back to the pitch. Now here's Wasdell. Wasdell came through batting for French. In the fourth inning, came through with a long double down the left field line that drove in two runs. First pitch, he bounces back to Brewer. Brewer knocks the ball down. It rolls to his right. He picks it up and throws him out on the fast play. Brewer to Stern. That was a bouncing ball right back at Brewer. He couldn't hold it the first time. It rolled a few feet to his right toward third. Raced after the ball, picked it up, and threw him out. Now here's the leadoff man, Harold Pee Wee Reese. Little Colonel steps up for the fourth time today. He's been up three times without a hit. He's had four hits so far in the series. The pitch is a bit outside for a ball. This is the last half of the sixth inning. The Dodgers batting two out. Dodgers lead four to three. Brewer, the second Yankee pitcher today, gets ready. Here's the next one. There's a foul, which is off here to our left. It's going into the stands. The third baseman, Rolf, and the catcher, Dickey, chase that ball. But it's up into about the 12th or 15th row of the spectators down here, and somebody has a World Series souvenir. The most practical souvenir, by the way, will be one of those swell Gillette Tech razors. Brewer goes back to the mound, gets a hold of the rosin bag, takes plenty of time. I wouldn't say that these pitchers have stalled at all in the series, but there's been considerable deliberation, as Red has already told you. Boys take plenty of time out there between pitches. They not only throw it, they think it out first. He's getting all ready. Here's the pitch, and there is a swing and a miss. He went for a slow curveball right around his knees, and it's ball one and strike two for Reese. As he swung, he kicked the dirt over the plate, and again, umpire Getz gets out the whisk broom and cleans it off. Gets back at the plate. Grieve at third, Pinelli at second, McGowan at first. The umpires have all done a swell job in the series. Here's the next one. He slowed up on that one again, but it was a little bit too close, and it's two and two for Reese. Yankees so far have three runs, three, six, seven, eight hits. The Dodgers four runs, three, four, five, six, seven hits. Here comes the next pitch. He hits a pop fly ball just back at the right side of the infield, back in the grass. Gordon's out there, takes it easily, and it retires the side. And so it's three up and three down. That is the end of the sixth inning in this fourth game of the World Series at Brooklyn. The Dodgers four, the Yankees three. And now we'll pause briefly for station identification. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. You are listening to WGN, the voice of the people, Chicago. Well, fans,
fans, here we are back here at Ebbets Field. We're going into the first half of the seventh inning, and the Yankee fans are standing up. Actually, their home team is coming to back and to bat in what they hope will be their lucky seventh. And the Brooklyn fans are howling at the Yankee fans to sit down. They'll get the same dose when they stand up in the last half of the seventh. These fans in this series are very definite in their loyalties. But there's been good sportsmanship on all sides. Every Yankee fan I talked to over in New York last night was talking with regret about the accident to Freddie Fitzsimmons, who really pitched a masterful game. Fitz, by the way, is in uniform out here today. Now, we're going into the first half of the seventh inning. Casey is out there on the mound getting in his practice throws. He's the fourth pitcher that the Dodgers have used today, starting with Higby, then French, then Allen, and then Casey. And the first man to bat for the Yankees in their half of the seventh is going to be Tommy Henrik, the right fielder. He flied out the first time, flied out the second time, and the third time, Allen hit him with a pitch ball. Henrik has had two hits in the series. Dodgers leading four to three as we start the first half of the seventh. The outfield playing Henrik deep and straight away. Now Casey's already. Here's the first pitch to Tommy, and it's a slow curve that just missed the corner. Waist high for a ball. Ball one. Rosdell is playing left field in place of Medwick. Casey starts his windup out there again. Here comes the next pitch. It's a ball outside, and it's ball two. Earl Combs coaching at first base for the Yankees. Shoots both of his arms up into the air. Fletcher coaching at third, pacing up and down. Now he's stopped. The Dodger catcher, Mickey Owen, walks halfway out to the pitcher's mound, says something to Casey, and then flips him the ball. Now he's turned around, and he's coming right in below us here, the back of the plate. Henrich up. Nobody on and nobody out in the first half of the seventh. It's anybody's ball game. The Dodgers lead four to three. Casey's all ready. Here's the next pitch. It's a ball. It's low inside. Henrich stepped up on that one and jiggled around a bit to try to make the pitch look bad, but he didn't fool the umpire. Even though the pitch was low inside, it's ball three. Casey starts his wind up again. Here's the next pitch. It's a spike. It just cut the height of the plate, and it's three and one. Casey's only concern that time was to get that pitch in there. He knew that Henrich would take it. He just got that ball right in over the heart of the plate. Dodger infielders talk it up. Casey starting his windup again. Here's the next pitch, and there is a high fly ball in the infield. The second baseman, Koskarad, is calling for the ball right in the base pass and takes it for the first out. So Henrich popped out to Koskarad to start the first half of the seventh. It was an easy play. Brings up the center fielder, Jolton Joe DiMaggio. DiMaggio having two hits so far in the series. Walked the first time, bounced out the second time, and flied to left field the third time. And so here is Joe DiMaggio up for the fourth time today with one out and nobody on in the seventh. Yankees scored a run in the first, two runs in the fourth. The Dodgers scored two runs in the fourth and went ahead with two runs in the fifth. DiMaggio takes a look at the first pitch and it was a beauty right down the middle. That time, right down the middle. Casey out there on the mound, very deliberate, taking plenty of time, thinking a lot with every pitch. He's getting all set again. Here's the next pitch to Joe, and it's low inside for a ball. The ball got away from Mickey Owen. It just trickled out of his glove, rolls back at the plate. And so the plate umpire puts in a new ball. Owen roughs it up, takes his glove off, walks out there in front of the plate, and flips it back to Casey. The second baseman, Koskarad, is playing DiMaggio out of position. In other words, not playing in the normal second base spot. He's playing almost behind the bag. The left fielder, Rosdell, and the center fielder, Reeser, are way back near the left field fence. Here's the pitch. It's in close and high. DiMaggio turned his head away first and then swung his body away from the ball. All two and strike one. The Yankee half of the seventh at Brooklyn. Fourth game of the World Series. Dodgers lead four to three. The next pitch, he swung in this. Went all the way around that time. And a sharp curveball right above his knees. And it's ball two, strike two on the batter. That was a real DiMaggio swing, and the crowd liked it. Hear that yell in your radio. Casey's ready again. Here's the pitch. He hits a bouncing ball down the third baseline. It's close to the line. It's a fair ball. No play on him. It's a fair ball. And it's a base hit for DiMaggio. 
The ball rolled down the third baseline and was just over the bag when Riggs picked it up. Riggs thought it was going to be foul. The third base umpire and the home plate umpire both signaled immediately fair ball. So there's no question about it, even though DeRocher is talking to the umpire. That's a hit. It's a base hit. Well, now DeRocher is going down to talk to the third base umpire, Bill Greaves. No fur flies when ball players and umpires disagree. There's no argument about this new World Series to let tech. It's the sweetest shaving razor you ever use. Lou Riggs talking to the umpire. Manager DeRocher is talking to the third base umpire, Bill Greve. And the home plate umpire, Getz, has walked down the third baseline, past third base, and is talking to Greve also. From here, from our broadcasting booth, as though Riggs thought that that ball was going to go foul. DiMaggio tapped it, rolled it down the line. Riggs figured, I believe, that uh, the ball was going to go foul, and it was the only chance they had because he was playing back and figured that he didn't have a play on the ball, even if he raced in and tried to pick it up. So there's a man on first base, and here is the, so far, the first real dispute we've had in the series, although it's nothing of a violent nature. You know, these managers are fighting for the world's title, and they're entitled to get up there and talk to the umpires, and there's no disagreement in that. A fire guest stands there and listens to what DeRocher has to say. Anyway, there's a man on first base for the Yankees that represents the tying run here in the first half of the seventh, and Charlie Keller, who has peeled off successive hits in the first, the fourth, and the fifth, is coming up for his fourth time at bat. He has six hits in the series. Six hits in the series and is tied with Rolf for the most hits by the Yankees. Well, after this bit of delay, the boys are going back to their positions. The base hit for DiMaggio. He's on first base and Keller is coming up. That's nine hits for the Yankees against seven hits for the Dodgers. Nine hits and seven hits. Charlie Keller, number nine, in the back of his gray uniform, a very dangerous hitter up there. He's waving that bat around, a man on first base. Here's the pitch, and it's wide a ball. I believe that one of the notable comebacks of this year of 41, as far as the Yankees were concerned, although Charlie didn't fall off so badly in 40, was the great work that Keller did for the Yankees in 1941. Here's the next pitch. He swings, and there is a high, short fly ball into right field. The second baseman is out to make the play. It's very high, but it's short into right field, and Kaskarad grabs it for the second out. Charlie Keller hit a very high fly ball, but short into right field. The right fielder Walker came in, but Kaskarad raced back hurriedly, calling for the ball, and took it for the second out. So now there's two gone. The second baseman has made both the putouts here in the first half of the seventh. I believe that everyone will agree where Casey didn't seem to have much on that ball yesterday. He has plenty on that apple today. Here's Dickey. Bounced out the first time, walked the second time, walked the third time, has two hits in the series. A left-handed hitter. Here's the first pitch to Bill, and it's a ball just missed the corner, waist high. The man on first base and two out. The second baseman, Coscarot, is playing Dickey right between first and second. He's at the halfway point, and he's playing him deep. He's way back on the grass. Man on first base, two out. Here's the next pitch. Dickey swings, and there's a line foul into the grandstand. Pass third, and it's one and one. Ball one and strike one for Dickey. Catcher Mickey Owen gets a new baseball, walks out in front of the plate. He still has the ball in his hands. He's roughing it up. He has his glove tucked under his right arm. And now he flips the ball to Casey. See, the Dodger outfield is playing this hitter, Bill Dickey, straight away. That's just about the way you have to play, Bill. He's very dangerous hitting to all fields. Yankees have a man on first. He represents the tying run. The Dodgers lead four to three in the first half of the seventh. Ball one, strike one on Dickey. Casey getting his sign again. Here's the pitch. There's a bouncing ball to Casey. Should be an easy out. Peg, he's out. Every hungry child, every neglected boy or girl, every 
young person with defective health. Every broken family is a weak spot in America's defense. Your local community fund helps to build strong Americans, supported generously. Well, we're going into the last half of the seventh inning of this fourth game of the World Series at Brooklyn. Now the Dodger fans are standing. Yankees are out there in the field, taking that ball around. Norm Brewer, the second Yankee pitcher today, is getting in his practice throws. Here's Walker coming out. And here's the... Here's the usual traffic announcement that they make here through the public address system, telling everybody to take their time going out of the ballpark and then to drive carefully and safely. Marv Brewer, a tall right-hander out there, getting in his practice throws. The Dodgers lead 4-3 to three as the ball game goes into the last half of the seven. The Yankees, three runs, nine hits. The Dodgers, four runs, seven hits. Here's Walker coming up. And Walker started the rally in the fifth inning that resulted in two runs. He doubled, and then Reeser hit a home run over the scoreboard to put the Dodgers in the lead. And so we have the Dodger Power Boys up here again in the last half of the seventh. Walker, Reeser, Camelli. The first pitch is a spike. It's right across his knees. It's called. Nobody on. It's anybody's ball game. The Dodgers lead four to three. Bob Brewer gets the sign again. Here's the next pitch, and there's a swing and a slashing hit into left field. A line drive. Walker comes through with a slashing hit over the left side of the infield for the Dodgers' eighth hit. His second hit of the day and his third hit of the series. That was a pretty hit. Just a nice liner right over the left side of the infield. That puts him on first base. It brings up Reeser, the center fielder who homered last time. And there is an attempted bunt. He foul tipped that ball. It dropped to the left of the plate, and it's one strike. And so the Dodgers, leading by a run in the seventh inning, are going to play it safe and play for another run. At least that's the setup now. And the Yankees anticipate a sacrifice. The Dodgers are going to play for another run. They're leading by a run. They want to try to move that man down to a scoring position. Here's the pitch. He crossed him up with a ground ball down to Gordon. Gordon over to Rizzuto. Out. Back over to first. He is out. A double play. There was a lightning-like twin killing. The play going from Gordon to Rizzuto to Sturm, and it's two gone. For a double play in shaving comfort, slip a Gillette Blue Blade in the new Gillette Tech Razor. Man, what shaves you get. Well, part of the part of the offensive strategy of baseball is to cross up the defensive strategy. And that's what the Dodgers tried to do that time. With Reeser running the first pitch, hitting on the second pitch, and hitting into a very fast double play, second to short to first. Now here's Camelli. There's a ground ball through the box. It is a base hit right through the center field on the ground. Camelli, second hit of the day. And the ninth hit for the Dodgers. Nine hits apiece. So you see, if a sacrifice had worked, it might have given the Dodgers another run because it would have put that man on second base if it worked. And then Camelli comes through with a base hit. Well, it went the other way, and the batter hit into a double play. Now Camelli's on first base with two out. And here is the third baseman, Lou Riggs, been up three times without a hit. The first pitch broke sharply into a left-hand hitter and low, and it's ball one. Last half of the seventh, the Dodgers batting. The score, four to three in their favor in the fourth game of the World Series. Yankees scored a run in the first, two runs in the fourth. The Dodgers scored two runs in the fourth and two runs in the fifth. The Yankees have used two pitchers, and the Dodgers have used four. We've seen six pitchers in all. Brewer has the sign. Here's the next one. It's low and fast. It's very low into the dirt. And it's ball two. Two and nothing now for Riggs. Run around first base and two gone. Takes his time out there, gets all ready, looks around the infield. The outfield is playing this hitter straight away. Here comes the next pitch to Riggs, and Riggs swung at a low curveball and fouled it. The ball rolls on the ground back to the wire. The umpire gets gives Phil Dickey a new ball. Red Rolfe comes in from third base, walks in on the grass, says something to Brewer.
The outfield playing straight away. I believe Rudd explained that expression we use so frequently to you in these World Series ball games and in all ball games. The center fielder is right out in line with second base, right out over second. The pitcher's inside and high. Riggs' body uh, getting away from that pitch swung halfway around, but there was no swing on the ball, and the umpire calls it ball three. And so it's three and one on Lou. Pitch was right under his chin. And on first base and two out here in the last half of the seventh. Dodgers ahead four to three. Here's the next pitch to Riggs. It's a ball inside close ball four. He walked in. So that's another base on balls. It puts a man on first, a man on second. Next man to come up coming out now is the pitcher Casey. And the bat boy is just handing him his bat. Here's Casey walking out. As we told you, the reason that Casey is batting in this position in the batting order is because Wasdell batted for the pitcher and then went into left field in place of Medwick. And so Casey bats in Medwick's spot and Wasdell bats in the pitcher's spot. There's a man on first, a man on second, and Casey, who dumped the single in center field the last time up, is up. There's two out. Here's the pitch, and it's a spike. You caught the outside corner. It's the fourth walk that the Dodgers have received today. One in the second, two in the fourth, and one in the seventh. Here comes the next pitch. There's a swing at a high curveball. He missed it, and it's strike two. Here's Artie Fletcher, Joe McCarthy's right-hand man, down here in front of the Yankee dugout, which is down here to our left, waving out there to the bullpen. Well, the Yankees are now starting to warm up two pitchers. Murphy. Murphy has now started to warm up. Now he's warming up another pitcher out there. Here's the next pitch, and Casey was going to swing, but he stopped. The ball broke away from a right-hand hitter. It's wide, and it's ball one and strike two. The two pitchers warming up are Branch, a right-hander, and Murphy, a right-hander. There's no activity in the Brooklyn bullpen, which is down the right field line. Dodgers. Runners on first and second and two out. The pitch is a strike. It's perfect. He struck him out. Called out on strikes. Brewer fired that fastball right down the middle, and it retires the side. And so in that last half of the seventh inning, there were no runs and two hits. The hits were by Walker and Camelli, and that is the end of the seventh inning.